The Sun isn't technically the center of our solar system. It's in a space called the barycenter. It depends on which planet you're standing in. The barycenter is usually closest to the object with the greater mass. So, since we're on Earth, the true center of the solar system is the Sun, but not the center of it. With respect to Jupiter, the barycenter is actually outside the Sun's surface. Jupiter is 318 times bigger than Earth, so the balance is different. The planets don't really revolve around the Sun, but around their common center of mass. Imagine balancing a pencil on the tip of your finger. You'd have to place it right in the center so that it doesn't tip on each side. Because the pencil has its mass equally distributed, it's easy to assume that everything balances its way like that, especially in outer space. But try balancing a hammer on the tip of your toe. Chances are you'll walk out of here with a broken toe. Its true berry center is close to the hammerhead rather than the actual center where you'd grip it. Earth and the Sun's berry center is like that hammer. The center of mass is more or less in the center of the object. Realistically, if the Sun were to rotate around Earth, then our little blue planet would have to be just as big as the Sun, or bigger. We can't disregard the other planets in our solar system, which means they all will have to rotate around us as well. But in the ancient days, bright minds always thought everything revolved around the Earth. They called this the geocentric model. And this made sense to them because it looked like everything above us was spinning around us. The sun and the moon played vital roles in human history, and we didn't feel insignificant in the universe until way later on. In ancient Greece and the Middle Ages, the big brains used the geocentric model to study space. It wasn't until the 16th century that that model changed. Back in those times, they couldn't even imagine that everything revolved around the sun. And they didn't have the knowledge to back any of this up. The Earth can't be the center of the solar system because it's not large enough for the job. For the conditions to suit the enormous size, life would have evolved differently. We'd probably be less dependent on oxygen. Some animals, like whales and dolphins, can stay for hours without taking a single breath. They can even sleep underwater. So the humans of the sun-sized Earth would have specialized lungs and wouldn't need to constantly be taking in air. It means that the plant life would be limited, with just a few shrubs here and there. There are trillions of trees around the world, but the main contributor to producing oxygen is the algae in the ocean. With such vast real estate of oceans and seas, the algae sitting on top are pumping out the air we breathe. Oxygen wouldn't be so abundant on this planet, but our breathing mechanisms might rely on carbon dioxide, another common gas found on other planets. If the planet is hot, then water will be scarce. We would only find it on certain parts of the planet, like mountaintops. The ground would be too scorched for anything to survive in properly. We can forget about seasons as well. The sun is currently just large enough to give us what we need. But since the Earth would be so large, and the sun would be another celestial body emanating heat, we'd always feel like we're inside a microwave. The days and nights will be different, and not much precipitation will happen. With so much heat produced in the core, earthquakes and volcanoes would likely erupt all the time. The surface would practically be a scorching plain of red magma floating around. This would be the true red planet. But if we had the same landscape like on Earth, living somewhere near the mountains could save you. The mountains would still be embedded in the core, but it would be better than staying on the ground. Some of the mountain peaks could even be 100 times taller than Mount Everest. The canyons could be so deep that the Mariana Trench would feel just like a little rupture. Animals would also behave and look different. Cold-blooded animals would have to soak up as little sun as possible so they don't burn. Animals would have to rely on migration to find water in distant lands. Birds can fly for hundreds of miles for migration season, so we'd probably see certain sleek-looking birds speeding through the air. But because gravity would be so strong on the colossal-sized Earth, the flying animals would need thinner bones and a thinner core just to take flight. The real survivors would be the microorganisms. They can live in extreme temperatures and pressures and can live without oxygen for a good while. The nights would be dark since there wouldn't be any moon to reflect the sunlight. 
the moon would most probably be on the opposite side of where the sun is shining, so it would forever be a floating ball in the sky. The Earth's rotational speed is the fastest at the equator, so if all the planets and the sun rotated around us, then our rotation wouldn't be so significant. New weather patterns wouldn't be good for crops. Humans would have evolved differently from what we are like now. We'd probably be shorter and stockier since gravity is so strong. And because of the soaring temperatures, we'd probably live in caves all around the world. The strongest ones would have migrated to the mountains. We'd probably have the same evolutionary path as we do now, but other physical features might be different. Our pigment would likely look different to combat the heat. The desert fox has large ears for hearing out predators and for cooling itself down in the scorching desert heat. It's possible that we would also have bigger ears than what we have now for the latter reason. We'd be a lot stronger than we are, and our bones would be thick and tough to break. Gravity is one of the key components to developing our bone density and muscle mass. This means we would unlikely need tools for hunting. This would have delayed the Bronze Age and modern civilization as we know it. With little vegetation, standing upright wouldn't be so necessary to find predators around us. We wouldn't be the fastest runners either, but we'd be strong enough to fight off a pack of strange-looking wolves. And if the Earth was supersized, then it's possible that multiple species of humans would be roaming the land in isolated areas. Some human species would grow and evolve into the intelligent thinkers of today, but some would remain the same. And some creatures from the past would still be around, unchanged. Sharks would have been around since the dinosaurs era. They wouldn't have to change their form or adapt because of their dominance. Other animals would remain the same because of their isolation. The Galapagos Island hosts some unique animals because they've been alone for so long. Without proper predators constantly lurking around them, they don't fear humans. The new mega-sized Earth would have areas as large as Asia filled with isolated animals that could remain the exact same as when they first appeared. The human species of those regions would also remain the same, since they wouldn't have moved or experimented with anything. Their diet would remain the same, and they would get used to the climate they're in. Technology would also have flourished differently in various parts of the planet. With some areas in complete isolation, they wouldn't have access to new gadgets and inventions. It would be like living on a planet with different eras in the present day. Other areas would be so advanced, they might even be flying themselves outside the planet in search of truth and answers. Our gravity is good enough for us to live properly and develop life, but if we pumped up our size to that of Jupiter, then gravity would crush us. And being the size of the sun, Earth wouldn't even be a planet, but a brown dwarf and would constantly be burning until it became a new sun. As of now, Earth is so small in our universe that we're practically like a grain of sand in the desert. On a cosmic level, we're an insignificant contribution to this universe.